What's up, YouTube? Set FS here. Today is currently Saturday, but I kind of wanted to come talk with y'all, man. I wanted to come talk with y'all about, I guess I could say, another psychology side of trading. Um, but this will be part of the ten account challenge. It won't be a episode, but let's talk about it. But I want to talk about following or staying consistent after going on a winning streak, sort of. So. As you guys pretty much know, like I went on a major winning streak um, right after attempt number one on a 10 account challenge. And it allowed me to flip five accounts. I flipped five accounts in a row, right? But, and it kinda resorts back to my old um, trading psychology video um, where I spoke about overconfidence. And, um, Honestly, that's my meta trader five I'm going off. But honestly, I wouldn't even say that I got overconfident because I followed my trading strategies that I would normally, um, well, I took my normal trades that I would normally take, right? Um, some of them just didn't go my way. That's the only thing that it was to it, honestly. But, or I either took it too late, you know what I'm saying? But um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was kind of marrying your trade, if that makes sense. Getting married to a trade setup. And that's really what took me out of the game last week. Um, that's what ended up taking me out of the game was I got married to a trade. So as you guys know, we have not entered a bear market on um and stocks crypto you know all of that stuff and everything is dropping um and everything is expected to drop more right so with that in mind i was pretty much marrying the trade of the market you know going back down i knew that it was going to rally at some point right but I thought that rally had happened Wednesday. So I was like, okay, Thursday, you know, it's going to continue back on down on this drop. But that is not what ended up happening. So the market kept on rallying and I'm like, okay, it didn't sell right there. I already lost that trade. Maybe it's going to sell right here. And I kept on doing that and um to the point where it just took me out of the game completely. I just kept on going, like, okay, it didn't sell right here, there. It might sell right here. Or, okay, it didn't sell right there. It got to sell right here, right? Like, it got to sell right here. But, as you guys know, that wasn't the case. It actually kept on buying up throughout the whole day. And I actually did record, like, a live portion of me trading those trades, um, taking those trades on Thursday morning. And I had won some of them. I had won Nas. Um, I actually ended up taking a buy on Nas. Um, because I was trading it to a resistance. I was like, okay, I know it's going to go up to this resistance, right? So I was trading to buy up all the way up to the resistance. And I had ended up winning that trade. It was a great win. But right after, I mean, I ended up losing all of that anyway, because like I said, I got married to the trade and I was expecting for the market to sell down. So it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was my whole thing as to why I ended up losing my trades last week because I got I just got married to a trade. Um, I got married to the market selling down, and it just ended up taking me out. And also, going back to the point of being overconfident, you know, you start to after a winning streak, you you about to just start to take any type of trade. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to do that stick to your game plan stick to your trading plan right um don't just start taking any type of trade just because you've been on a winning streak why are you on that winning streak because you take the trades that you normally take or you take the trades you have disciplined yourself and trained your eyes to see you know what i'm saying don't take a trade just because oh it hit this point i feel like it may sell right here you know what i'm saying trade what you see not what you hope the market would do so 
and I really didn't do much of that. I think it was like only one trade where I really did that, where I went back to the market and I was like, why did I take this trade? You know what I'm saying? I think it was only one pair where I ended up doing it. But for all the rest of them, it was pretty much like I normally take these type of trades and I normally win them. But um, some of those did not play out. Like I was in profit on a lot of them, but it wasn't enough profit to overcome my losses that I ended up taking, which basically all came from the loss, you know what I'm saying? All of them came from now. So one pair pretty much wiped out all of my profits that I was in. And some of those, like my Euro trades that I ended up taking, the sub Euro USD, um, those pretty much, it wasn't bad trades. They just didn't go in my direction either. Same thing with the GBP pairs. Like, honestly, I think it was only one bad pair or one bad trade that I took outside of my Nas trades that I would have been like, you know, why did I take that? All the rest of them though, like I said, were trades that I would normally take and it just didn't turn out in my favor. But um, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk to you guys about before this trading week started. Like I said, today is currently Saturday, so we're about to get into the market tomorrow um see what trades of us we have and we'll mark those charts up and show you guys what i'm seeing and stuff like that so let's go ahead and get into that that offense here and in this video kind of gonna be a little bit different but i'm gonna just really like go deep into my trades you guys know what i mean so um as you guys can see here we have cleared a, another account today it's currently thursday um sorry for not doing the live trading like I normally do on my Thursdays to show you guys like the live stuff. I was just like really kind of zoned in. And plus, I actually um, traded from my phone. Like I stayed in bed, traded from my phone. Because I already knew what I was looking for. I knew what I was looking at. I just waited for it to happen. And then I just entered on my phone and just let the trades rock. So as you guys can see, um, we hit big on 30 for the most part on our trades. And we had a actually, like we actually had a great start to our trading. Um, this Monday, I think like no, all the trades ended up hitting Wednesday, but I ended up getting stopped out on about most of them except one of them. USDJPY was the only one that hit TP. All uh, the rest of them I got stopped out, but you know I had moved my stop loss into profit. On them, and I'm gonna show you guys what ended up happening to the actual trades. All right, so um, all of them I got stopped out on, and I was kind of upset about that because I'm gonna show you guys when we get to the charts. But I mean, I didn't take no losses, so I wasn't really that upset. You know what I'm saying? I was more so happy, proud that I didn't take any major losses. But it would have been nice to you know see all of this be green. Um, and then we did end up hitting on gold as well. So that was a great trading. Um, or great trade at least. Then same thing with Euro NZD and US 30. We had another great trade set up on US 30. And, um, ended up getting stopped out of that one. So, uh, had some really great trades. And I'm going to show you guys when we get to the charts. So this was the trading history so far. And then we just went on a losing streak for a little bit. I'm going to show you guys why we went on that losing streak. And I'm going to explain what ended up happening. But then we ended up getting it right back. And that allowed us to flip our account. So you guys see the new deposit that we ended up um, putting in at $97.11. And then this is where we are right now at $217.20. So... You guys see everything right here. Um, now, let's go to the chart. All right, so market just opened back up from its midday session. 
but I'm gonna start with I'm just gonna go down the list. I'm gonna go down the list of my regular forest pairs, and then I'm gonna end up going to the indice, or basically US 30. So, this is Euro NZD. <clears throat> we ended up closing, got this one pretty early, um, and then we got stopped out on the other entry. But as you guys can see, it would have came back and hit stop outs anyway. So, Probably a good thing that we got stopped out of that one. Uh, did end up going in our direction for a little bit. And it was a great trade. Everything went as planned. You know, probably could have took profit up here. Because it came right up to my negative 61.8. So, we actually could have set our TP right there. And we would have collected 88 pips. Um, it's like a little bit above my TP too. Um, so that's fine. Euro JPY, don't did I take a trade in Euro JPY? No, I did not. I missed the trade in Euro JPY. So, uh, let's go over it real quick though. So, this right here, um, this right here is. Basically, the market coming back to fill in. Uh, this right here is basically the market coming to fill in, like, other areas. You know what I'm saying? So, the market came to fill in this little space right here, which is what we are seeing right now. But, when the market opened up, it was, like, down here. It didn't even break this yet. So, what I was looking to see was either the market break this trend or once they had broke above this resistance right here waiting for the retest and then boom the move back up which is exactly what ended up happening you guys let me delete this you guys see the retest right here and then it ended up buying up and my best entry would have been down here like the great entry right here because as you guys can see came back and retraced the field level and the trend line, I mean, trend line but it also retested the previous high that it had broke so it created a higher high higher low then it came back to retest the previous high that it just broke which means the market is going to continue going back up once we got this rejection right here so we had a lot of confluence line up right here and that was everything that you know I wanted to see but I ended up missing this trade so um, a little bit upset about that one because it moved perfectly like it did exactly what I wanted it to and even like on the retest came back and retested every single area that I wanted it to and everything goes so my analysis perfect but I just did not execute on the trade going on in GBP JPY um, pretty much same thing so Took this buy on GJ and still in this. Oh, well, I just closed out of it, but this is where we ended up closing out of it. At um, this one, I did not get stopped out of. We had minimum drawdown, like barely any drawdown at all. And um, trade went on and hit TP. This one right here, I was just trading with the trend. That's honestly all it was. If I stand this out. I was trading with the trend because um, I knew that the trend was going to continue once it broke back above this resistance right here. So when it came, broke above this resistance and came back and retested it. Basically, it's the EJ trade, but this time I actually took the trade. So this is what EJ would have turned out to be if I would have took the trade. You know what I'm saying? We saw that it went in our direction. And um, all I needed to do was just take the trade. And that's exactly what I ended up doing with GJ. I just missed it with EJ. So, same trade set up. I just ended up taking that one. Euro USD um, trade went perfectly. Um, only thing was, that literally the night before, 
I ended up getting stopped out of it because I had moved my stop loss into profit. It kind of retested one more time right here, and then that was when I got stopped out, and it dropped. So, just another situation where great analysis, perfect analysis. Uh, we just ended up getting stopped out of the trade, which is perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? As long as my analysis holds true, I'm okay with that. So, we ended up getting a break of trend. Um... And we got in at the retest of that low that it previously broke right here. So we got in at that low. And once we got the wick rejection and all of that, you know, we pretty much knew that we was in it. Well, um, good. Then it came back and retested it again. That's when we marked the five field. Perfect retest. And we knew that the trade was going to drop. And it did exactly that. Again, another 100 pip trade right here. Perfect, perfect trade. GU, same exact thing, literally. <laughs> so, um, market. Broke trend, broke major trend. As you guys can see, came back and retested it right up here. This is also the same type of retest that we saw on EU. So EU and GU moved the exact same. EJ and GJ ended up moving the exact same. Everything played out perfectly. Hit TP. So everything did exactly what I um, expected it to do on every single market that I ended up trading. So very happy about that um very pleased with that as well because again it just goes to show okay said you know what you're doing you know what type of setup you like to take you know what type of trades you like to take just take them so um very excited about that allowed us to flip another account which we are at account number six now uh, hopefully we can clear number seven tomorrow we're going to see what type of setups we have before tonight is over with I'm gonna mark up my charts and see what I got going so um last one is UJ we ended up taking a buy on UJ right here because we knew that the market had to come back up you know there's gonna be a major retest or a major retracement when we ever whenever we have like a large drop like this so market came back in um covered in all this space right here and then now I'm expecting another drop soon. Or I'm expecting for it to go back down to dropping. Um, just gotta wait for that confirmation. And I'm gonna see, you know, how the market reacts. Now, on to gold. Market again. After breaking major trend, broke structure, came back and retested, boom, drop. So all of these are really just a break and retest type of setup. Now, of course, there's more to it as to why I chose these setups, um, got in where I got in at and all that stuff. But to put it in simplest terms for people out there who may be watching or are just beginning trading, um, I definitely encourage you to learn how to trade the break and retest. Now, this is not a little, you know, throw in for my course or anything like that. But I do teach how to trade the break and retest. Um, Jessica Lane does as well. If you guys watch my FX Summit video, she's a great instructor, great trader, and all of that. One of my favorites out there. But she teaches break and retest. I'm pretty sure Q probably talks about it a little bit. And I talk about it a lot. Um, if you guys watch my videos and stuff like that, that's pretty much how I trade, <laughs> honestly. So... Along with a lot of other stuff as well, mixed in with that, a lot of other confluences, which is basically everything lining up to be your reasons to take that trade. You know what I'm saying? So, um, go ended up dropping perfectly and then retraced back up. So, I'm glad I got out where I got out at because, and the crazy part about it is, I was actually at work when I pulled out of this trade. So, I had just made it into work and I was looking at the charts. And like my TP was actually 
down here was lower. So my TP was actually like down here. But I was I ended up looking at it, I was like, ah, no, that's close enough. I'm cool with that. You know, that those other pips or whatever really won't make that much of a difference. That's <laughs> like that's honestly what I said to myself. I'm like, uh, ah, it won't make that much of a difference. You know what I'm saying? It's just three up three more dollars or whatever it is, or whatever it would have been. So I just ended up closing out. And then I came back to my charts to see if it would have hit my TP um, if I would have just, you know, let it rock. And I came back to this long candle. Like, it was literally in the middle of this long candle right here. So it's very important, guys. Like, how close does the market have to be to your TP for you to just be like, okay, you know, I'll go draw right here. You know, I'll go ahead and pull out. Or studying how long the market may travel before we see a retracement. You know, on average, how far does GJ travel after your entry? On average, how long does UJ travel? Or on how far UJ travel after you enter the market? You know, learning things like that is very important because if you look here, it didn't just happen on gold. So we get out there on gold. It retraced as soon as we um as soon as it hit TP. I'm pretty sure it happened. Let's go on GJ. No, GJ didn't happen on GJ. EU and GU. EU, as soon as it hit TP, ended up retracing all the way back up. GU. Ended up traveling down a little bit more, but ultimately, what did it do? Ended up retracing all the way back up as well to the midpoint. So, you know, it's very important to understand how far a trade can travel before it ends up retracing back to either your entry. It may retrace and end up reversing and going back up and hitting your stop loss if you did not move your stop loss into profit and all of that. So, Definitely understand that guys and we see the same thing here with us 30 as well as soon as we pull it out of us 30 market end up going all the way back up here, so Learn and understand how far a trade can travel before it ends up um, Retracing or even having like a minor pullback, you know what I'm saying Learn all of that with your pairs. That's why a lot of Forex traders suggest that you, you know, learn how to trade one pair for a while. Trade one pair, learn how that move. Once you master that pair, then you can move on to other things. But here we have US 30, which is the last trade that we ended up taking. And here it was a break and retest, but it was also at a um, very strong resistance that caused it to drop before, but it was also at a certain field level that I like to trade that I knew it would react to once it got to that level. So here, um, the market initially had dropped already, right? Now, I was watching this drop, but I missed it. I didn't get to enter the drop until about right here. I entered it right here, caught this whole sale. The reason that's a why, because it had broke below this support right here. And... Yes, I'm making it sound as simple, but it's really not that simple. I'm going to just be honest with you guys. So once the head broke below here, I knew it was going to continue dropping. And that's exactly what it ended up doing. Now, this is the US 30 trade that I ended up getting stopped out of early. Um, on this retracement right here. So, ended up retracing back. And that's when it ended up coming back and hitting my stop loss that was in profit. But, definitely should have pulled out. My mistake on this one was I ended up taking the trade and not watching it. US 30 is one of those pairs along with NAS and SPX that you have to watch whenever you are in the market. You can't just hop in those trades and let it rock. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people scalp them because they're very volatile. They move fast. A lot of things can happen in a short period of time. So it's one of those things that a lot of people scalp and they have to watch it because most most people don't even go for more than about 20 to 30 points on these pairs anyway. So that can come very, very fast whenever you're trading and scalping on US 30, especially at the opening of the New York session or 
um, in between that closing of London and going on to New York session. So um, that was my mistake on that one. It did end up dropping right after the injury. I had very minimum drawdown. Like, I want to say I about had no drawdown, honestly. Ended up dropping right after I entered, and then it pulled back up and hit my stop loss, which was in profit. So now this is where I ended up making a lot of mental mistakes. And the reason as to why, like, you guys saw all the losses, like the losing streak that I went on. reason as to why is because, for one, I was, I kind of felt some type of way that I did not close out of my trade down here like I wanted to, and it ended up retracing and hitting me, um, or knocking me out of the trade, because I was up, I could have cleared this account, like the way that I was thinking, I was like, dang, I could have cleared this on Wednesday, I could have been moving on to the next account, and I could have flipped that account, like I could have did another week where I flipped two accounts, um, so, which would have put me at seven, you know what I'm saying, so I was like, dang, I missed that opportunity, and it was all my fault, so I kind of felt some type of way about it. And then um, I let the market get done pulling back. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to let it get done pulling back, see where it's going to pull back to, how far it may pull back, and I'm going to just let it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to let it create another zone for me, basically. So that's when it ended up coming down here. And um, I entered right here. No, I entered down here. I had caught it a little bit late. So I entered down here. I had a very tight stop loss. And it ended up stopping me out. So, ended up stopping me out right there. Lost that one. Boom. Came back up. Rejected again. Entered again right here. Lost that one. Boom. I saw that it was failing to break above here. So, I entered again right here. It dropped down. Okay. Then, boom. Came right back up and stopped me out. I lost that one. So, now, you gotta, you guys got to think. Like, I'm taking about three to four entries on all of these, right? Now, although my risk management is very well, you know what I'm saying, I didn't lose that much on all of those entries. I probably lost like 2 to $3 each, you know what I'm saying. I didn't lose no more than $4 on each entry. So, it's like my risk management is all right, you know what I'm saying, for where I was in my account because you guys got to remember, I won some trades before I ended up taking all of these entries on US 30. So that's why I was very comfortable on um, taking these entries the way I was taking them. Because it's like, okay, I got some room in my account. You know, I got some room in my account where I could take these entries. And plus, I know the drop is coming. That's why I also kept taking entries. Because I knew the drop was coming. I just didn't know when it was going to come. So once I saw like the market kept on failing to create higher highs and stuff. That's why I kept on taking all the entries that I was taking. Then it ended up breaking below this, this support right here, because I was looking at the one minute. It ended up breaking below here. I was like, okay, maybe the drop is about to come right now. But it did not. Same thing over here. It ended up um, coming below this support right here. Um, and then ended up retracing back up, and it knocked me out. Right? So... In my mind, I'm like, okay, I keep getting faked out, kind of, you know. And it kind of irritated me a little bit, but I trusted in my analysis. I knew it was coming. I just had to be patient. But the thing is, I really had no point of taking any of these entries at all. You know what I'm saying? I had no reason to take any of these entries at all. Um, What the market ended up doing was trending it ended up trending back up all the way up to here and filling in these wicks that was over here because um let me go to my telegram chat i'm gonna show you guys the picture So proud of my team this morning. Um, guys made a lot of profit. So this is the picture, right? We see these wicks on the one hour candlestick. Very um, long wicks. And you guys can see my entries that I ended up taking. So this was the one that I was talking about. 
ended up going down right after my entry boom perfect then it ended up stopping me out right here then the entry down here like i was talking about boom stopping me out and this is where i kept taking all the trades so the little trades in between kept getting stopped out of them stuff like that so boom we're there so this is when i ended up taking my entry all the way up here and then it dropped all the way down but you guys can see look at these wicks the market always comes to fill in with, well i'm not going to say always but normally if the market is coming to retrace an area um and fill in an area it's going to be long wicks like these so it came back to fill in these wicks all the way up to the top and then that was when it dropped so all i had to do was once i saw that this market created a higher low right here once it created this higher low then i should have been like okay maybe the market may come and fill in this area right here because all of this is empty right all of this is empty now these wicks did come and fill in in this candle right here but these candles came and filled in these wicks in this candle all the way and we see this other day area right here but this is what this candle came and filled in right so once you guys understand like filling in areas and stuff like that in the market um and then it will help you guys understand like targets and stuff like that which goes back to my point of when i was talking about you know understanding how far a trade may travel or understanding when to pull out and stuff like that so if i would have just been patient and recognized okay this market created a higher low um we got this major wick rejection right here that's got to be filled in at some point the market may come back and fill it in right after it creates this higher low right here and that's exactly what ended up happening and then the market dropped all the way down so that's when I ended up taking my entry. As you guys can see by the arrows, I ended up taking my entry all the way up here. And uh, it was perfect, perfect entry because I was very confident in that one. I was very confident. Once I got over my losses right here, I was like, okay, I know what the market is about to do now. Like, all I had to do was just be patient. And then, as you guys can see, that's why I ended up taking it all the way at the top. I didn't even wait or hesitate. Once I saw my um, confirmation on the one minute time frame, then I went ahead and took my entry all the way at the top and caught it all the way down to the bottom. You guys can see my arrows and everything. So you guys know <laughs> I literally caught that whole move right here. Um, then it ended up dropping down a little bit more, which is perfectly fine, you know. But that was my trade on US 30. And ended up retracing so um even broke that down to my people in my course and everybody was able to learn from it grow from it some people made some money but that was the us 30 trade right there and ended up being a very a great morning <laughs> it ended up being an amazing morning so very happy with the results of today and how everything turned out um to sum it up for the us 30 trade be patient you know be patient so i'm gonna see you guys next week i may not trade tomorrow which is just friday but i'm gonna see you know depending on how everything is set up honestly um if i do trade anything it's gonna be us 30 just to be straight up honest and um we're gonna see how everything reacts so i'm gonna see y'all tomorrow if i do end up trading if not i'm gonna see you guys next week and this will be the end of the video so i'm gonna see y'all later on man i'm out all right so so far we are in some live trades right now it is friday morning um i was just at 200 though it's kind of coming back a little bit but uh, from US 30 and we are in GJ no GU which I don't have pulled up on my charts right now but <laughs> uh, I go to the GU chart you guys can see the GU entries over here so we are in GU right now um, basically waiting for it to go back so then and close out of our trades. I want to 
if I could do a, no, I can't do a clothes all. But that's where we are right now. And then I'm gonna show you guys when I actually close out all my trades and flip this account. So here you guys can see it. We ended up closing out of this trade now. We're at 206. Um, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful morning. And we actually had a great successful morning. So here are all the trades. The crazy part about it is, I'm gonna show you guys this as well. So you guys see this loss right here? Uh, let me zoom back out. Took that L and the reason as to why was because I talked to myself out of the trade. You guys see that I was in US 30 earlier last night because I had a feeling it was about to sell. I'm not gonna say I knew it was about to sell, but I just had a great feeling. We're just gonna leave it at that because I kind of tell you guys, you know, not to predict the market. <laughs> but I had a great reason to hop in this sale last night and I, had, I was in it. I was all the way up here at the top and then woke up this morning and it had dropped. So definitely could have um, been up big, probably wouldn't even have had the trade this morning. But yeah, that's just where we ended up at. Um, so great morning so far. I got it going all the way down here to this green line. That's where I got the market going, but I went ahead and pulled out because I reached my goal, you know. Had no reason to even keep on trading once I reached my goal. Um, but yeah, I was all the way up here. And then I had to catch my second entry right here. Uh, my other entries right here and traded it down basically. So, could have flipped two more accounts this morning. Could have got to 800, I mean eight accounts and would have been good would have been three accounts in a week which would have been a record for me but it's all good man as long as we were able to you know flip it this morning complete the challenge or complete another account then i'm fine with that but um, we're going to see how much more it reacts and what it does when it gets lower because if it continues to break and go down um may hop in that sale again but we are at 751 it's currently 751 uh, you, probably, you guys probably can't see it um, mm, it's good enough yes yeah, 751 right now so i might just chill out let the news come out because it is nlp friday um so we're gonna see what happens what comes out and how the market reacts. And also because my camera won't focus in. What's up YouTube, Set Effects. And we have now reached the end of the trading week. Um, So I did not end up hopping back in US 30 um, cause it kind of started moving a little funny. Started consolidating a little bit, um, but I was pretty much out of the market anyway. I didn't even want to hop back in the market cause I had already flipped two accounts and my withdrawal did not complete fast enough for me to, you know, start back trading anyway. So I didn't even want to risk any of the money that I had made. And um, so I just left it at where it was, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> pretty much after I had made that other hundred and completed the other account, I pretty much just done after that anyway. I did continue to watch it though and it ended up moving perfectly as I projected it to going based off my field levels and stuff like that and zones that it was creating. So at least I know, you know, my analysis is correct. Everything is perfect. Um, that was one of the main things, but I am done trading this week. Time to go on to next week though, but that's how you come back out there blowing an account. Flip two more. So on to next week, we at seven now. Now let's go ahead and do two more next week, get to nine, maybe three more next week, get to 10, you know what I'm saying? And be done with the challenge by next week. So hopefully that's what I plan on doing. Um, and if we can, then you may see your boy in the FTMO challenge after that. We're going to see. I'm going to see y'all next week.